Welcome back to the Two Black Runners podcast presented by The Running Report. And this week we have something like totally different. Now we still have our podcast that's been released on all streaming platforms from uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher or Google, wherever you listen to podcasts, you'll be able to find the Two Black Runners podcast but we're gonna release this podcast in parts here on YouTube because we had five individual interviews on Sunday that we did on our IG Live. It was a big like black running community conference and just had some of the top elite athletes from now and in the past come on and just talk about the social injustice, systemic racism, and everything that's been going around right now with the death of George Floyd and Mount Aubrey and everything like that. It was really just great conversation, things that they want to see happen in the future, how race has affected their life and how it has affected them in their running. It's a, it's a great listen and we're going to start it off with Corey Carter, then the next day we're going to have Michael Granville, then Raven Rogers, Will Clay, and then lastly on Saturday we're going to end it off with Joseph Gray. This is some really great interviews, hope you guys listen to every single one of them, and this is just our efforts in to keeping the conversation going we all know that usually it lasts for two weeks it's like a black spirit week spirit weeks for a couple weeks but here on the runner report we want to keep the conversation going and we're doing it the best way that we can by bringing bringing you to the issue and we're bringing you right to the black perspective and in the track community and this is all hosted by aaron potts my brother the other black runner and two black runners and he did his thing bro on ig live so aaron take it away with our first guest or our second guest or third guest i think i'm gonna reuse this aaron just just take it away hey what's good how you doing how you doing <laughs> you got your water you like i need some water i got me some water too yeah, bro, we we really we've been talking in here for a minute. We've been talking in here for a minute. My roommates, I heard them. They're like water, and they ran in and just <laughs> handed me one. It was funny. It was, it was funny. <laughs> but let's just hop into this. Yep. You guys don't know Raven Rogers, eight hundred, eight hundred, four hundred two. You can catch her in the four by four. She nice with it. But basically, what I want to talk to you a lot about uh, Raven is your IG post. Mm -hmm. um so you had a you had an ig or do you want to just you want to share the story for everyone yeah. sure okay so can you hear me really clear i just want to be sure yeah. okay so just long story short um i live in a complex where essentially you're paying for that extra security to have a front desk person right and there was a situation where the fire alarm was pulled and i was just a little confused as to why wasn't there any notification about there being an intruder on the property. I look outside, there's ladies outside spraying the fire extinguisher, et cetera, just crazy stuff. So then the police are called, the front desk person tells me to make me aware, you know, like, hey, um, this person, the police are coming up to your floor. So I'm in my house at this time. And I was on the phone with my mom and my aunt the whole time and then Next thing you know, I'm looking because I hear them coming on my floor. I'm looking through the people and I see how, you know, they're on the floor. Next thing you know, they're like, oh, I hear them say, like, this is the room. And I was really confused because I'm like, okay. And they bang on the door and I'm like, I'm already at the people. So you can imagine, like, I'm kind of froze, you know. And so just them banging on the door, I'm confused. I open the door and he's in a stance, you know, he's like this, like has the gun pointed right at me. And I'm, I immediately out of survival skills, just start screaming, like, what are you doing? Like, you have the wrong person. I've never been so scared in my life. I was embarrassed and I was embarrassed because it was all men, you know, as firefighters, just all men. So I was embarrassed how bad I was shaking. Um, and then there was no apology. He didn't, he started asking questions after he said, do you know what she looks like? And I'm like, so you pull a gun on me without knowing how the actual intruder looks. I'm in my own home. And then you ask questions. And so after that, um, you know, it's not always easy to get through something without, I'm shaking out. <laughs> it's not always yeah, easy no. to get through something especially when you don't have an apology. And that's, that's something that 
um, is happening a lot is that we aren't seeing apologies for all of these traumatic experiences that are happening due to racism. Um, so that's really what happened. Yeah, and it's definitely when someone is trying to invalidate your feelings because um, we never really, I mean, America really has never done done right by Black people or just everything. And I liked how you... In your video, you touched on you touched on trauma and how you touched on trauma and how like if you have something like that, like because Corey said it already, like we as a people we've learned to compartmentalize these things and right. shut it down and, and not think about it. And I know for myself personally, with everything that just happened, I felt like and I watched your video and after that, I remember I was talking to my grandma and she was like just like tell me she was like praying for black men and like and she was like crying and just talking about like you know they used to lynch them back in my day and stuff and I was just like this is crazy like this is generational trauma mm -hmm. that we're feeling like this comes all the way from like our ancestors and I've been telling everyone like for me like this whole thing has like lit a fire in me like I'm definitely exhausted and tired but it's listening a fire in me it means like not only help the younger generation, but I really want to do it for, like, my grandma. Like, mm -hmm. my parents were out marching. I'm like, that makes me really mad. You know? I'm like, why are they marching? Like, because they already been through all this. Like, right. And to see it happen again, like, so, like, yeah. Like, when, when you feel, it's just like that harassment feeling. Like, when you feel that, like, how you're saying, you feel embarrassed. Like, you like, so many people in your line have felt that. You know, and it, it's crazy. Like, yeah, the piece, the uh, PTSD, it's, yeah, it's wild. It's really sad. And after watching the other two, you know, Corey and Michael, um, I really thought about just the fact, I remember I was asked this question earlier about, you know, when is the earliest that I've experienced kind of like a racist encounter? Um, and I had to reflect because I really thought about it. Now, I've been in um, a lot of, I've been a minority in a lot of situations. I went to a bilingual dual language academy from first to eighth grade. I went to a private school in high school. So I, it's easy to make things less than what they are because I'm so used to being comfortable being the minority. So it yep. doesn't affect me as much, but it does affect me and it's made me so this whole everything, especially after that encounter has um, made me so aware. So as I reflect, I remember being in high school taking a genealogy class. And um, because I I love talking to my grandma and once, you know, when my grandpa was alive, hearing just family, you know, what were their moms like? What was their dad like? What was, what was their grandparents? And that's what grandparents are there for. And I remember taking this class and I remember, um, I couldn't trace, I could only trace back to a certain part, you know, because, you know, slaves records were burned. And I remember this one kid was like, yeah, you know, I was related to King Henry VIII, and we had to make a presentation about what we yep. found in genealogy class. And so I just have my grandma as the source for what, what was after, what was before her. And that's, and it's sad, you know, that we won't, uh, some most of us won't have that further understanding of the people that make us our family, you know, um, without where it stops, which is our grandparents. No, yeah, definitely, it's definitely sad, and it and it affects you. And also touching on what you're saying about like being the only, I myself have just being a black distance runner, and and I grew up like in a diverse area, and I'm I'm dark, I'm I'm dark dark, you know. So like, when I was thinking about like, I kind of did that same thing because I was thinking about like the trauma and stuff. And I was like, man, I really like low key compartmentalized like a, li a lot of stuff and learned how to deal with it. Cause like being like just dark skinned growing up in elementary school, like I've been called like ugly just because I'm like dark, mm -hmm. like made fun of and stuff. But eventually, I mean, I, I was raised by like amazing, amazing parents, amazing loving parents that cared about me. And like my mom is a beautiful black queen, mm -hmm. so I know I'm, I know I'm queen. queen. I know I'm beautiful because she raising the, you know what I mean. Take a queen, yes. away the queen, you know. Yeah. So I know I'm beautiful, but 
I just felt like, I just felt like this, it reopened a bunch of wounds. Like, it just made me think about, like, when that stuff, someone said, like, a sly comment or, like, some joke, you know, and I'm just like, man, that's not cool, bro, that I had to, I, that's, that's what I had to deal with as a child. Like, imagine your kid coming up to you and being like, hey, why, why are they making fun of me? Because I'm, because I'm dark and, like, mm -hmm. that stuff. Like, I, I acted like it didn't, like, hurt my feelings or anything in the moment. I was just like, oh, that's whatever. But, like, that's it. That did hurt me. It did hurt me, bro. And it's, and it's okay to tell people. And I feel like even as, like, black men, what I observe, because I don't know for facts, and hopefully you can help me on this, is that, you know, you – you, you're kind of raised in some instances, some people are raised to not say when something hurts their feelings. And it's okay for you, it's okay to say and tell somebody, you really hurt my feelings by doing this because if you don't, if you don't show that vulnerability, vulnerable, uh, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> vulnerability, then they're not gonna understand that how you're affected by what they're saying, that they're gonna continue it, you know? So. Dude, I literally had I don't want to say this person's name on here, but I literally had this conversation today where something was re reported and then like uh, they they contacted me, that person contacted me because they didn't know that the stuff they said was really like 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 wrong or anything, you know? And in the moment when it happened to me, I thought it was just like, it was uh, annoying, but I was just like, you know, I, I let it go. I was just like, whatever. And like, I mean, I forgave them and stuff and we were we were on good terms before this. Mm. But like, yeah, that's just like an example of me just being like, oh, like, eh. But um, one other thing I wanted to touch on with you too is, I was looking up the trauma thing, which is really interesting to me. And I was looking up the five stages of grief: how it's mm -hmm. denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. And I feel like black people like go through all five of those stages with these with these killings. Like, mm -hmm. especially, like, if you see it as a kid, you know, the first time, you're like, what? Like, that can't, that can't be happening all the time. But then you're, like, angry about it. And and then you get depressed about it. You don't think nothing could change. Mm -hmm. And then you accept it. But mm -hmm. you should never have to accept people just getting killed for no reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and just, just even that, that's great that, that like it's very significant and it speaks very loud the fact that those are the five stages i mean because like you're right we shouldn't accept that this is happening and and i and it's crazy that as soon as i heard my friend was like first of all i didn't hear the george floyd situation as soon as it happened my friend i was on facetime where she was like yeah like did you hear about the dude that like got killed you know because i'm still on the mod aubrey you know so it was like you heard the shit like you heard about the dude that got killed, you know, the cop was like in my head I'm like another one. Like we just have one and then we have another one and it's just it's just sad and I was like I saw somebody saying on the post like I don't want to have to be oh like feel like not a, like this is just a norm. You know, we're just you just kind of think that this is this is a norm and it shouldn't be that way cuz it's it's shit is wrong, you know? No, it's definitely shouldn't. And yeah. could you, like, speak on, because um, a lot of the focus, I mean, Breonna Taylor passed, you've seen Sandra Bland, women, women, they, it happens to women all the time, but yes. I feel like the, I feel like black, black women are, are somewhat, like, over, overlooked. Shadow. Yes. Um, and, you know, the, the thing I see the most, especially on Twitter, is how, like, all these women are like, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're rooting for these black men, and where is, where is the same energy, you know? And even, even with that being said, you know how they say like the black woman is the most, you know, overshadowed, overlooked, like kind of less than a white woman type of thing. And it's like, why? You know, why? Um, because essentially I come from a family of very strong black women, um, very ambitious, very intelligent, knowledgeable women. Um, and I, I don't understand why there's not this like wrong is wrong. Why are we why why is one bigger than the other one? And why you see how we 
we because the George Floyd situation happened so much recent, it's a lot of anger towards that, and of course anger towards all that we've endured. Yeah. But it's like the Breonna Taylor situation could have yeah. been more relative to anybody. You know, like Corey said, she was in her home, she was asleep. You know, she thought she was gonna wake up the next day over a miscommunication. And and people should be more enraged about that. The fact that the officers were still out. The case wasn't even looked into because, you know, it, it's just so much confusion is so much, you know, so many questions that should have answers to them already. That could have been, that almost happened to you. Exactly. And my mom, at first I was nervous to speak on my situation. And when I talked to my mom, my mom was like, that could have been you. And I was like, you know, yeah, like it, it could have been and all because of a misunderstanding. But the thing that I don't understand and I don't, I don't, I will never understand is why are we seen as a threat? Why are we seen as the beast? You know, you know how black people have been depicted in art, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an art major. So you, you see how black people have been depicted with art. Why are our insecure, the things that we're naturally born with taken as, you know, something to make us feel lesser than. Just for example, of lips, you know, it's just, I, I would never understand the, the reason behind it. All I can associate it with is with um, hate. Um, and just not to, just to make it my point really short is that I just feel as though, one thing I really hope that people do is really become more open to perspective you know, I, me going away to college, I've been, I've been raised a certain way, but I've, I've been open to more perspective about anything. So I think it's important to have variety in your perspective. So you have an option to choose which way you want to take, not just based off of what you were raised on. Um, that, that's just something I feel like is really important. And then people, people being raised on not hate, um, yep. because, it's, it's good to make people aware, but if it's on hate, then it it only keeps going through generations. Um, so, yeah. And, like, like, I felt like one thing I said about, like, like, for me, like, when I think about, like, this trauma, the trauma aspect, I'm going to go back to, I was like, well, if I want to fix this trauma, the first step is, like, recognizing it and then being proactive mm -hmm. about addressing it, like, Mm -hmm. When something happens to me and I go home and I'm like, dang, like, that was really terrible. But I'm so mad. I'm like, I feel embarrassed. I feel harassed. It's like, oh, I'm carrying this trauma. But mm -hmm. it's like the same thing with, like, this racism. Like, this is a racist country. We were born into a racist country. So I like this anti-racist sentiment because we have to be continually proactive to break down this racism because it is ingrained in our society. Right. Right. And, and I feel like the thing I was talking to a friend about that I, I think is stemming change and is stemming um, a different result as opposed to the result of riots, you know, the Rodney King riots and just the ones previous before that, Martin Luther King marches. I think the difference that will bring change in why our protests are so diverse um, it's not just all black people on the line that's out there walking. It's, it's diverse because everyone is upset about this. And I think what Michael is saying is that we're at a standstill because we're in quarantine. You know, the pandemic is still happening. But also, um, like, with, this, is, this is something that we should have been kind of addressing. Like, yeah. you know, this is something that social media because we because we're sitting still and social media runs the generation and my sister's generation who's 16 and the one after that there's more exposure to what's actually happening and things are happening quicker because before you had to have a pigeon and a bottle and a messenger you know if you heard about it you heard it but now you're getting facts and you can't say you're not seeing what's happening with your own eyes so you saw what happened it's about what you what you trying to do and how you feeling in response to what your eyes are showing you, you know? And that's why social media is really, I feel like it's really driving all of the action and we, we might have a different result maybe five years later. Yeah. Oh, so, and that, yeah, that, when I talked to my grandma too, she was like, back in the day, they had the lynchings. We didn't see them though. Yeah, you heard about them. 
We heard about him. We didn't see him. We yes. didn't start seeing him until 91. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. When That's phones crazy. and digital and everything is, is out. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you, Raven, yes. for sharing thank your story. Thank you for using your platform. Um, I, I, just can, I just hope that more blessings and greatness your way. Um, I really do thank you for doing this. And it makes, you know, you have to be a brave person to be able to do something like this. So hey, well, I, I, I appreciate you. But, yeah, thank you for just coming coming on. But this is what had to be done. So mm -hmm. we're going we gonna to normal, normalize this, you know? We got to talk it. about it. Yes, yes, yes. It, we ain't, we can talk about it. It's all good. <laughs> yes. Okay.